Hello my friends, and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel, and in this video I'm going to be creating a really cool, really different uh, Pikachu diorama. So we're going to make this really cool little diorama out of a very small Christmas bauble, and I've got a few different 3D printed parts here. So as you can see I've got a little bridge, I've got Pikachu himself, I've got a few reeds and some plants, I've got a small Pokeball. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of this together into a cool little uh, Christmas bauble to create this diorama. And I'm making this simply just because my youngest son loves Pokemon. So I said to him that we would make something really fun and really different. So these are glass baubles from the Hobbycraft. And they are uh, really uh, different because they're a small glass bauble with a bit cut out of the front. So we're going to make everything that we want and sort of combine everything that we want through the front of this glass um, there's probably easier ways to do it but we're going to have fun and we're going to try to do it anyway and we're going to see how this comes out so we're going to use this das modeling clay and that's all i'm going to do i've rolled this between my hands rolled this between my hands quite a few times just to warm it up so that it gives me a little bit uh, of an easier time sort of manipulating and molding this in the glass bauble um, i'm not too worried about getting some of the dirt or anything on the bauble because i can always clean that down later um, and that's all i'm trying to do is just build up the base area of what or how i would want this to look so by placing this in there we're placing the the clay in there and then we're going to manipulate it so that it creates this uh, small stream kind of thing so by using uh, your index finger and thumb we're just going to press down into the clay and that's going to create this uh, this little uh, river area this cool illusion of um, sort of like a natural little creek or something like that so we're just going to like I say, slowly, slowly try to manipulate and move that, that clay. The good thing is once the clay is warm, you can kind of manipulate it and move it around quite a bit just like this. And then we're going to place our bridge and give ourselves an idea as to what it's going to look like. Okay, okay, so we're quite happy. We're going to press that down just so that gives us somewhere that we can glue the bridge later. Now this clay is air drying clay, so once it's in there, that's all you've got to do is just wait and leave the clay to dry. I'm just going to use my uh, sort of one of my tools here so this is just one of my little um, files and that's all I'm doing is just kind of creating where I want the little pathway to look so I'm just adding this little bit here because this is going to create like uh, the illusion that there's a pathway that they walk it across to go over the bridge and things like that and then again just put in a few bits in just to kind of look at and plan where they're going to go so that gives me an idea as to how this is going to look as we build it by just adding the reeds just in the back here so what I'm doing is I'm just going to use a few different colors and paint things up. I'm going to use a heavy red across the bridge. So I've primed everything already. These are all 3D printed models. So I've used a 3D, printed, uh, a 3D printer to create all of these cool little bits. And then I've primed them using a nice gray primer. And then I'm using the heavy red across the bridge. And this is just going to give us a really nice base color to the bridge just here. This is creating this really cool looking, um, almost sort of... Um, I don't know, it's sort of this really cool sort of bridge that you would see sort of on postcards or like, you know, from the other side of the world. Like it looks really, really interesting. It's the kind of thing that you see in like little gardens, you know, like the little Zen gardens and things like that. So yeah, we're just gonna paint this in this really cool red color. Um, then I'm gonna use Avalanche Sunset from Citadel. This color is a nice uh, sort of yellow color, but this yellow color takes to models and takes to, um, takes to paints really, really well. Yellow can sometimes be quite thin and difficult to paint onto models. Whereas I find this yellow, this Avalanche Sunset is the perfect base color because you can tone up from it and paint up from it. And it adds this really nice sort of highlighted tone straight off this. So this is a great, great base color. And it's a great way to start painting Pikachu. So as you can see, I'm just using this uh, straight out of the tub onto Pikachu, just painting this up uh, nice and smooth, trying to make sure that the, the paint is nice and smooth so that I don't have it pooling too much or that it's not too sort of thick in one area and things like that. And yeah, just painting all around this little Pikachu that we've, that we've printed, just like so. Just making sure to paint all across his tail and things like that, yeah. It's quite fun being able to 3D print some really cool little things like this. So once the yellow is dry, I'm then going to use a tenebrous grey, or you could use black if you wanted to, if you're following along and you're painting something similar. And that's what I'm doing is I'm just painting the areas of Pikachu that would be black, so the very tips of his ears. He's got these stripes down the back. Um, his eyes are actually black. 
um, so you're gonna paint in the eye sockets black as well and a very 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 tiny tiny bit of black just on his nose because he has a very 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 small uh, black nose which is very very difficult to paint to be fair so yeah so just gonna paint the uh, all of those little bits in black and then we're going to use a deep yellow then to build that tone up. So as I said, the Avalon Sunset is the perfect base. And then using a nice thin down version of this uh, deep yellow, this is going to allow us then to slowly build up a bit of this uh, tone and character and things like that. As you can see with the eyes, the eyes are black, so the eye sockets are black. And then that's all I've done is I've just placed a very, very, very small dot of white into the corners. So that's all there is, is just black and white, black in the eye sockets, and then a very small dab of white just at the top, just to create that illusion that it is catching the light. At first, I thought the cheeks were pink, uh, but they're actually not, they're red. So we go back and we paint those in red in a bit anyway. So don't worry too much if you're looking at this thinking, Pikachu's cheeks aren't pink, they're red. They, they will be, don't, don't worry too much, don't worry. And we just paint in this for fun, like I say, trying to paint this up. What happened was I'm trying to paint this from memory and then I had to call in my son, who's the expert, to say what colour is Pikachu's eyes, what colour is his cheeks and things like that. And then he had to fill me in and I had to get it all right for him. You know what it's like with... Uh, you know what it's like with, uh, with little ones. So yeah, he knows all about it, so I'm following the expert. So there we go, once the yellow is done then, we're gonna use this pure red from the eye painter. And this is what we're going to just gently paint around those cheeks, as you can see. Just using the very tip of the brush because this can be a fiddly difficult area to paint on the model. Um, and then we're just gonna paint this around those sort of circles just like so just trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on any of the yellow that we painted because the yellow would be difficult then to paint back up so yeah just like so using the very tip of the brush as i say and just being as controlled and as careful as possible once that's done then i'm going to use strong tone which is a really nice dark dark brown color and i'm going to use the strong tone straight across the bridge and this is going to allow all of those different sort of uh, wood uh, grain effect, all of those different gaps between the wood and all of these bits. It's going to allow it to bring out all of the depth and all of the darkness and all of those bits, just like so. Nice and simple to do, nice and easy, but it has a really, really great effect on your models. Just by painting a uh, sort of wash across the top, this will dry down in all of those uh, creases. As you can see, it's picking out all of those little uh, both areas, all of those little areas down the sides and things like that. Once that's dry, then I'm going to use a carmine red, and I'm just going to dry brush this across the top. This is the perfect starting highlight. This is going to uh, sort of define a bit more of the tone and bring out a little bit more of the highlight and a little bit more of the colour. And it's just going to bring the bridge tones up, just like so. You can see happening just there, and again just here across the uh, the wood slats because this is picking out now just the raised points because we dry brush in. So it's picking out all of those slats on the wood while leaving the darker areas in between uh, staying dark, just like so, nice and simple, nice and easy. Dry brushing can be quite a rewarding, quite a fun little process. It's quite an interesting uh, way of painting and you can get a lot of detail out uh, with very, very minimal effort. We're then gonna use that pure red that we used on Pikachu's cheeks and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna slowly dry brush this up on top and this is gonna give us uh, the proper sort of highlight and proper sort of tone there you go you can really see this is already making a big big impact on the color and the tone and the feel of the bridge as well because we don't want it to be dark we want it to be nice and bright and colorful and cartoony and things like that to go along with uh, the pikachu that we painted so again just dry brushing this across picking out all of those details so we get all of those uh, bits of wood grain there we go you can really see that highlight coming through now just like so nice and simple like i say it's very rewarding very easy sort of technique to use but it gives you quite a lot uh, for uh, for such a simple thing you know you get quite a lot of vibrance a lot of highlight especially when you're painting things like wood what i'm also going to do i'm just going to use bloody red this is a very 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 bright bright red and again just going to use this for highlighting this time i'm going to be a little bit more sparing and just pick out bits that I really want, like the very edges of the, uh, the, the, the sort of railings and things like that. Just pick out some of the very, very, very extreme edges, just like so. There we go. 
And again, just making sure to rub off all of the excess paint onto a kitchen towel, just so that that allows me to dry brush with just a small amount of paint. You don't want to put too much paint on your brush. It's always better to underdo it and do it in multiple layers than overdo it and then have to try to work back. So once that's done, then I'm gonna go and use some super glue and then we're gonna glue Pikachu down onto the base. So we're gonna glue Pikachu onto the bridge now. Uh, now that we've painted both of those parts, what I'm gonna do is I'm just using a small matchstick and I'm just gonna gently and carefully place glue onto his feet. So I'm not gonna glue loads of areas. I'm just gonna try to glue a little bit on his feet so that when we place him onto the bridge, his feet will sit into those grooves and that glue will strengthen and allow us to create a really nice solid bond. Gonna try to place him on the bridge without dropping him too many times. And there we go. Just gonna press him down gently, just so that we don't damage his tail. And there you go, that is Pikachu um, glued down to the, the bridge. So that's the first part of our diorama complete, nice and simple. We've got our character, and we've got a little part of our um, character and things like that with our bridge, a little bit of our story already together. And it looks great. The yellow really stands off, the red is gonna look amazing. So what I'm gonna do with the reeds, I'm gonna make this nice and simple. I'm gonna use some speed paint. So I'm gonna use the army paint, the speed paint, and I'm gonna go with the orc skin color. And this is gonna give us a really cool, nice, vibrant green tone on all of those leaves and all of those areas uh, of the, the sort of basin stuff that we want to look sort of green and vibrant and things like that. So we're gonna use this and we're gonna to tone this into a really nice, nice sort of color. And as you can see, this is a nice, vibrant sort of uh, light, light sort of cartoony green Green, which is exactly what we're looking for by painting the Pokemon and, and the Pikachu we want it to be a little bit more cartoony now from there I'm gonna use a scale color scale 75 I'm gonna use an errati green uh, if you don't have uh, this color it doesn't matter and you are doing something similar you can use any sort of light light sort of color tone and things um, maybe sort of things like the um, uh, the lighter sort of Vallejo tones, you know, like the goblin greens and things like that. And that's all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to slowly, and I say slowly because it is going to take some time, uh, paint individually all of the different strands that I think are going to be on the leaves. Now, again, you don't have to be too careful or precise or anything like that because nature isn't perfect. But that's all I'm doing is just using this to highlight. Instead of just painting a highlight color, I'm using it um, with the paint um, brush so i'm using the 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 sort of the brush strokes is the word that i was looking for sorry I'm, I'm using the brush strokes just to pick out the highlights and that brush strokes and those brush strokes then are going to add to the depth and the character of the leaves so that it doesn't look too flat so that's the word that's the one thing we don't want is the the colors to just look really really flat so as you can see i'm just building that up through um sort of highlight but also by using those brush strokes and using the tip of the brush and things like that it adds to the character so as you can see i'm just doing the same thing just down the long strands of the uh the reeds as well just painting uh, some of those brush strokes add in some more uh character and tone and texture onto the model just kind of creating my own sort of uh, cartoony style and things like that just creating my own little sort of different way of doing it and that's the point is you can create your own things you can just have fun while painting you can do your own thing like i said before um in in a previous video um you could paint however you like you know there's no right or wrong way to paint it's, it's completely up to you so once that's done i'm going to paint using the leather brown and the leather brown then i'm just going to add around these sort of uh, rounded areas around these reeds so just across this top area this this area just across here and that's all we're doing is just using this leather brown it's a nice mid-tone brown and that's going to separate the green and give us something else to look at on the model as well and then we're just gonna be careful not to get this onto the green. Um, again, just make sure that all your paints are dry because sometimes the speed paints can take a little bit longer than others to dry. Um, so just make sure that all your paints are dry so that you don't end up uh, sort of having to paint over it multiple times and things like that. And you can really see that that brown stands out on the reeds and makes the, the character of the reeds really look uh, the part, really look interesting, really look different. Yeah, just like so. So just being careful and trying to go around the, the area of the model as much as we can 
There's so many cool little things that you can 3D print these days. There's so many cool little basic bits that you can buy and use and all these different things. Uh, so this has been a really fun little project and something completely different. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to use a few of these color shifter colors. Now I did a video on testing these color shifters a long, long time ago. They are brilliant paints, um, but you have to use them in the right sort of way. So they work in different ways. And that's all I'm doing with this is just adding a small amount of these color shifter paints onto these shells. So I 3D printed these really, really small shells and I'm just adding some of the color shifting paints onto these. The reason being is these are gonna go down in the water area in our model and then occasionally um, these are going to shine through and show through on the model because they'll be in the water. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll catch the light so they should really sort of catch a little bit of a shine. And again, less is more with these sort of technical paints and these sort of extra paints. When you add these kinds of things, if you use it in a sparing way, you notice it all out more when you look at the, the finished piece because on our model, we're gonna get a tiny little bit of a shine and a little bit of a glimmer coming from in the water and that should create this really cool sort of effect which will catch your eye but not completely overtake at the model it's not going to take over and it's just going to be that little bit of an extra cool thing so what i'm doing with these i'm just painting these straight onto gray now it says on the box or it says on the packet to, to, to paint these onto black so the darker the base the better the, they are the more vibrant they are so i'm just doing it on gray uh, for this because I didn't want them to be too extreme. Like I said, I wanted the shimmer to be quite subtle and I wanted it to catch your eye, but without it taking over the model. So I wanted the, the shine to be there, but without it being um, too vibrant, too bright, taking over all of what we've done, you know, and those sorts of things. So that's the reason why I'm painting these on too gray. Um, the shine and things will still be there, but it's not gonna be as extreme. So if you wanted a more extreme shine, then just base uh, the, the whatever you're painting in black. So I'm gonna use a bit of soft tongue, which is an army painter shade or wash. I'm just gonna gently add this around those sort of brown areas. And the reason being is there's a few little bits of sort of recessed points. So there's a few bits on these uh, brown parts here that are, um, easy when you put a shade on there the shade will just sort of sit in those recess points and then it will dry down and it will show through um, like a little bit of contrast so it will give you a little bit of darkness in those little bumpy bits and those little uh, recessed points and it ties the colors together quite nicely as well so yeah just add in a little bit of the soft tone on just to tie it all together and get those sort of um, darker areas and recess points really looking good and really looking the part now, once all that's done, I'm going to use a Vallejo Earth Texture. This is a brown earth, earth texture. I use this on uh, most of my bases, if not all of my bases, because you can paint this different colors and manipulate it in different ways, and you can do so many different things with it. And that's all I'm going to do is just put a load of this inside, and then I'm just going to paint this across all of the clay area. So this is going to paint across all of that clay, and then this is going to allow me to um, sort of create the illusion then, like I said, that there's a river going through and that we've got sort of plant life and greenery and all of these different things. So just trying to add this in. I'm gonna try to be careful now not to get this on too much of the glass, but it doesn't matter if I do because, um, like I say, it's glass, it's quite easy to clean down. Things will rub off it. You can clean it down with, you know, normal sort of glass cleaning products and things. So it's, it's not the end of the world. It's just something that I'd rather try to be more careful and more precise and not have to work afterwards to get it back to where it should be so as you can see like i say just build in and build in and build in just go in as, as as nice and even as i can so that it creates a nice even sort of uh, muddy kind of effect a muddy kind of look just like so just going through the whole phases here there we go once that's done, then I'm going to use uh, Ash Grey. So this is a nice, uh, this aptly named Ash Grey, being as we were going on Pokemon. I didn't think of that before. Um, but pretty much what we're going to do is just paint a small amount of grey. It could be any grey that you've got. doesn't have to be this particular grey. I'm just using this one because this is a nice middle of the road, even grey. And I'm just painting the path. So like I said earlier, when I planned by using uh, my... Uh, sort of uh, file where the path was going to be this was the reason it's just so that it breaks things up and gives us a little bit more to look at because we don't want it all just to be earth and and, and sort of 
dirt and things like that we kind of want a little bit of a mixture so by adding this little path it just kind of adds a little bit more to that story a little bit more to that uh, overall character once that's dry, I'm going to use a game wash. So this is a sepia tongue. This is a big, big tub of a sepia tongue from uh, Vallejo. This is a great sort of um, brown wash, especially for larger projects like this, because this has a real cool sepia tongue. It does dry down very, very well. And it creates a really, really great looking effect, especially across uh, sort of bases and, and sort of things like this, you know, when you're painting sort of browns and things like that and dirt and things. It's very, very good for that. So I'm just going to put this all on the inside. I'm going to cover across the grey as well. Um, again, just to tie the colours together and make it just a little bit more sort of cohesive so that all of those colours sort of blend together and become quite um, even. You know, you don't want the grey to stand out too much off the brown. You kind of want it all to be uh, sort of uh, well well sort of um, tied together now, the cool thing is with this is it does dry down really really well it doesn't look as extreme as you'd expect so when it dries down it, it dries down quite evenly it's a very 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 good uh, product from there then I'm going to use a graphite so this is just a lighter gray again so you don't have to use the exact same one if you're doing something similar and I'm just using a graphite just a dry brush up that pathway and you can see that that little bit of dry brush makes all the difference because now we have a light and dark color through that, that pathway but that brown is tying the pathway into the sort of um the, the earthy sort of colors and the earthy tones that we've got um set in here so nice and simple just a light bit of dry brush with a very small dry brush just so that it's nice and controlled then we're going to use a nice big chunk of um for me i normally use mod podge but you could use pva glue if you wanted and that's what i'm going to do is just put a real big amount of uh, mod podge in here mod podge is normally the better option because it dries down matte so it uh, it dries down into like a really nice matte effect allowing your uh, allowing your project not to become too shiny so um that's all we're going to do is just cover all of this area on the front and the back using this Mod Podge and we're going to put quite a thick layer here because we want this really to, to grab hold of the basic material that we're going to put in here because we're going to put um, some grass and things like that in here but we want this to hold on to it so that's why I'm putting quite a thick uh, chunk in here because I don't want it to be too thin. Now I'm using this um, Hobby Round so this is a meadow flock this is from the um gale force 9 um product range and this is pretty much just um very 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 small chopped up bits of sponge and it really does have a great effect because when you place this onto your base especially on things like mod podge or even uh, pva glue because it's quite spongy it absorbs that glue meaning it sticks to the base really well but it also solidifies and strengthens as well so it creates a really really good strong bond and that's exactly what we're looking for so as you can see i'm just placing this in here and then i'm using my finger to tap it down so that it it ties um like i say it bonds that glue and basing material together now i'm going to use some small trees now these are very very small trees um, they're nothing special they're nothing fancy they are literally just from amazon and that's all i'm doing is i put a little bit of uh, super glue into the tree uh, into the base of the tree and then i'm just pushing that in into the the clay where i've already pre-planned where it's going to go but these are literally just off amazon these are part of a much bigger uh, pack so i bought a pack of trees i think it was something like 30 trees for 10 pounds or something like that you know they're very basic plastic trees they're nothing fancy as i say they don't you know i'm not building my own trees from scratch or anything like that i'm not i'm not i'm not crazy you know um so yeah very very simple very very easy to find trees and that's all i'm doing is just gluing those at the back so that, that creates again this look of this pathway like we've come out of the forest and we're going across to the plains and things like that and then our 3D printed bits as well. Again, just add in a small bit of super glue and just placing that into the front, just like so. And it's starting to, starting to look good. It's starting to come to shape, you know? So that's all we need now is to get Pikachu in and to get our reeds in. So we're gonna use glue across the base of the, the, the bridge. And then we're gonna push this into where we had already planned because we had already pushed this down and, and had a little bit of a planned area. 
which will work just well, uh, which will work perfectly here. As you can see, we can just place him in, just push him down, and then he's gonna glue and dry and stick in there perfectly, just like so. And there you go, we're starting to look the part. We're starting to get there, we're starting to get there. It's looking great. So then we're just gonna add the reed in as well because we like having the reed in there. Try not to get any of the super glue on my fingers because it does stick your fingers together. And there we go. Here we go. So we started to get there. Okay. So we're almost there. That is the stage that we've got to. Now that everything's glued in, he's looking really, really good. Everything's painted. We've got some really good looking grass. We've got some great effects, but we want to step this up and add a little bit more to it. We want it to be a little bit more individual and a little bit more special. So we're going to paint using a very light, light flesh color. So this is a very, very, very peachy pink color. And we're going to add and paint some of these other small areas. So I've got these really cool little uh, flowers that would normally be on top of like lilies or on top of water. I'm just going to paint these. As you can see, I've got the lily next to it. And I've used the same um, orc green color on the lily pads as I did on the uh, grass and things like that. You might also be able to see in the background where my shiny little um, color shift paints have come out. Uh, where the shells are in the base now because I've placed the shells into where I'm expecting the water to be. And then I'm going to use red tone on these light flesh points. And with a little bit of water and a little bit of red tone, we're just going to paint this in so that this creates a nice sort of pinky flower effect, just like that. Look at that. That's nice and simple, nice and easy. And that's going to create a nice bit of depth and a nice bit of tone. And again, break things up and give us something else to look at so that it gives us a little bit of a nice mixture of different things, different techniques, different colors, and all things to look at on our little diorama. Just like so. So once that's done, then I'm going back to use my Tenebrous Grey or Black if you'd like. And then I'm going to use this on a tiny Pokeball. So I've got this little tiny Pokeball that I've 3D printed as well. And just using the tip of my brush, I'm just going to paint this inside and around that sort of recessed point. As you can see, there's this recessed point between the top and bottom half of the Pokeball. So I'm painting this black for now because then we're going to paint the other colors, the lighter colors and the more Pokemon colors uh, once that's dry. So when it is dry, we're going to use ghost gray, which is a really nice light sort of whitish gray. And we're going to paint this just across the bottom, just like so. And you can see we're just going to take our time now and be careful not to get the paint in that recess point in that area where uh, we've painted the black. We're just going to paint this in this sort of nice light gray color rather than a bright, bright white. The gray takes to the miniature in a really, really good way. The, the paint um, takes to the miniature much, much smoothly than a white paint might. And then once the gray is dry, we're then going to use a pure red to paint across the top. And this is going to be a nice, nice, bright, vibrant red. This is really going to catch our eye and this is really going to make uh, the Pokeball look amazing and stand out. There we go, just painting this around. And that's all we're gonna do. As you can see, I've I've added a small um, little wire onto the bottom. So that's all I've done is just using a little hand drill I drilled into the base of the Pokeball just so that I could paint it. And that will give me the option then to be able to glue it into the base. Now for this, um, I've turned to my wife. My wife loves working with resin. She does a lot of resin work with um, preserving flowers and things like that. She loves this. So she's the resident expert on resin. I know nothing about resin. All I know is uh, she needed to use uh, two parts of one and one part of the other. So the resin that she's using is uh, like a, uh, a glass cast resin. So this should be like a really nice, nice sort of shiny sort of resin. And we're gonna use this and we're gonna place this into the, uh, the, the, the model as well to create the water. Now, as you can see, we're using a lot of protective equipment. We've got masks, we've got gloves. This is an area that is definitely something that you've gotta be very, very careful with, or at least know what you're doing as well. So we're adding a little bit of water, uh, a little bit of blue, sorry, blue ink into the water. Just be careful if you're working with resin, especially uh, with things like the fumes and things like that. As you can see, this is uh, our resin desk because the desk has, has taken a bit of a battering, but we use this to do a bit of resin on for all different kinds of projects. And then we're just gonna stir it and mix it together. And then we're gonna use a small uh, like pipette just to pick up bits of the resin and then slowly place that resin into 
uh, a little diorama. Now be careful not to overdo it. You want it to look like a stream, but you don't want to add too much in because if you add too much in, it might overflow and ruin everything you've done. But once it's dry, you should have something that looks like this. And all in all, that is our Pikachu diorama complete. This is something that we've decided to do as a fun project for our son. And I think it's turned out really, really well, considering everything is 3D printed um, and it's the first time I've ever done anything like it. Um, I think it's turned out really, really good. But you guys let me know in the comments below what you think, whether you enjoyed this one, whether you would like more um, sort of projects like this on the channel, because I'm more than happy to add more as well. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, your positivity, and everything you do here. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys on the next one.